Hola! It's Dave Billy Brett Thompson coming to you from the Dream Unlocked. And I am here to talk about how to start your online your own your own online business using the dreaming out loud technique that I created as a result of my TED Talk. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of introduction while we wait for people to hop on. Um, I will start by saying that the dreamunlocked.com, all one word, the dreamunlocked.com, is a boutique coaching business for uh, actors, writers, and dreamers. And what I mean by dreamers are people who want to change their lives. Straight and simple. Um, and my story is a story of constantly changing my life. Thank God Google is free. Uh, <laughs> so I basically teach everything I've done, right? I started out as an English major and then I was going to be a professor and then I was like, no, I'm going to do community organizing. So I went more for the Children's Defense Fund. Uh, and learned how to build nonprofit organizations, how to build teaching curriculum because I was running freedom schools uh, in Washington, D.C. and in North Carolina. Um, and I had to raise the money for the school to work. I had to learn how to write grants. I had to learn how to create curriculum right, for a summer program and then a year-long after-school program using the arts um, as tools for teaching. And teaching module so I learned teaching methodology I learned a lot of that and then I went to grad school in acting for theater and I uh, you know you have a whole module where you go to school for 16 hours a day it's really great um, <laughs> but I also chose to be to teach undergrads while I was in grad school and put together a curriculum based on the techniques the Meisner technique that I was learning so I have a huge background in teaching and more importantly teaching, putting together a teaching structure and a methodology. And all of that came to fore when I was asked to write a TED Talk about how I went from the projects in Liberty City, Miami, to being <laughs> an actor, a writer, and a producer. And I'm going to tell you, the stuff that I'm going to talk about today in creating your own online business is exactly how I did this. Okay. I learned that I was good at looking at a problem and then organizing it into structural steps to teach someone how to do it, okay? Because it's how I look at problems. And it has everything to do with my English Shakespearean background of diagramming sentences and understanding structure to being a community organizer and having to organize curriculum and teach parents and students and legislators how to um, create structures for children, educational structures and modules. So it's inherent in all of the learning that I've done. And then again, in graduate school, I went to learn a particular technique and I was in school three years for it. And I had to learn it in movement and voice and speech in theater history in analyzing scenes and dramatic structure. I had to learn all that great jazz. And it's all served me because then I got to practice it. So when I became an artist, I looked at it as a problem, a business that I was going to run for myself. And I started as an actor working for other people. And after I mastered the form, <laughs> the technical demands, because I traveled with a Shakespeare company and we did shows and rep for a year. That's eight, sometimes 10 shows a week if you want to get overtime. Um, and then I taught again while I toured the acting company. So, and I taught in universities wherever we were doing a show. So I've always believed that you're a student for life. And if you're curious and a bookworm like I am, and I have to take ideas that are on paper and then turn them into real viable projects that make money, I figured out that's what I'm smart at. I'm, I'm smart at organizing that. Now, don't ask me about economics. Don't ask me about taxes. I pay somebody else to do that because I know I'm really bad at that. Don't ask me to add up a bunch of numbers, right? I firmly believe that people should stay in their lane. And when you are creating your own business, understanding what your lane is, is critical because your lane is what you're an expert at. Okay. And what you are an expert at is what you sell. And mine is tried and true. When I became an artist, I learned how to act. Then I wanted to write. 
So I went to workshops, I hired a coach, I co-authored with another writer who had more experience. I learned by putting a piece together over a four year period and developing it in workshops and theaters and feedback and et cetera, et cetera, and doing it over and over again and doing rewrites. That's how I learned to write, right? Which was while I was teaching. And I was teaching and working for someone else. I have been figuring out in my career, each step of the way, how not to work for someone else. How to acquire enough knowledge that I'm an expert that can create a structure that will support me for a living. I'm the student who takes what I was taught in school and actually turns that into a job. I guess people call that an entrepreneur. I'm not sure, but that's what I do. So after I learned to write, along with already knowing how to write grants from working as a community organizer for a nonprofit, I learned how to raise money for my projects. Then I learned how to produce them. I learned how to hire staff, right? I learned how to take something on tour as a producer and a performer. And all of that is business. It's straight business. I got an entertainment attorney who taught me how to take apart contracts and read them letter by letter, right? So that when I became a producer, which at the time when I went to work for Simon Says Entertainment, I had never been a proper producer. Right, like a Broadway producer, a film producer. I was a producer of a solo show on the road, right? It was just me and you know my staff. I had not learned how to produce massive projects with hundreds of people involved. Well, being a producer and taking four films to Sundance and then winning a Tony for taking the very first play that to Broadway, uh, Porgy and Bess with Alger McDonald, I had to learn on the job what producing meant. And Broadway taught me a lot. While I was doing Broadway, I was producing two other shows. <laughs> the first black production of Streetcar Named Desire <laughs> on Broadway. Don't ask me how I did this. And I was producing Porgy and Bess, and I was in a Broadway show, Clyburn Park. I didn't sleep for a year. But in that time, I learned how business works. Not what they teach you in school. I learned how people raise money, how people create contracts, how they trans that, translate that into marketing to sell and make money, right? With Porgy and Bess, we got a contract. And this is how I learned. Because people tell me all the time, how did you learn that? How did you learn that? How did you learn that? I was like, Google is free. That's first off. But I'm a bookworm, right? I'm a bookworm who knows how to look at something and break it into moving concepts, pieces, right? So we got asked to come on as producers for Porgy and Bess about seven days before the deadline. We, I got the contract in my hands. The, we had a, it was 24 hours, 48 hours is when I got the contract. It's like 65 pages long. When I got my first contract to produce my off-Broadway solo show at New York Theater Workshop, it was 15 pages. I had to read it. And as my great grandmother used to say, baby, read the paper. She would have me read bills, newspaper articles, insurance companies, all of that stuff. She would have me read it out loud and then talk back to her about what I heard. That's what I did with these contracts. And with Porgy and Beth, I had 48 hours. It took me the first 24 hours just to read the 65 pages and figure out what they were asking me. Then I broke it up into sections and things I didn't understand. I went on Google. I translated, then I sent questions to the lawyer. And I was like, am I understanding this correct? And then I would repeat what I understood about the language, the legal language. And he would go, yes, under these given circumstances. That is how I learned to be a producer. I dissected those 65 pages in 48 hours, right? Asking and researching section by section. I don't know if you've ever seen a legal contract, but it's no joke. So that's where I am, right? And then at the end of reading that and analyzing and breaking it up, I then had to make a report to the lead producer, Ron Simons, my boss, about what I understood about the contract, what I thought needed to be revised, what would serve us the best. So I had to translate really complicated language into workable parts, right? That's how I learned. And that's how I learned that it was time for me to have an online business. You know, I wasn't just an artist. I was somebody who was actually doing business. Because same thing with Sundance. Our first film went to Sundance. <laughs> Night catches us and our next film was Gone Home Road. I'd never taken a film to Sundance before. Boy, did I learn fast, right? It's 
lots of moving pieces, it's unions, it's contracts, it's marketing, which is something people don't know that, you know, producers go to marketing meetings every night and revise business strategy when sales are low. That's exactly what you do when you run an online business. It ain't rocket science, right? And it was my coach, because I hired a coach, who said to me, you're teaching really, you're teaching and doing really great things. You really know how to transform into the next part of your life. So you should teach that. And then people started asking me to teach them that, um, particularly here in Morocco. So today I'm here to talk about how you transform your life from working for someone else to working for yourself and how to work smarter, not harder. And the key to working smarter, not harder is to learn how to do, um, create something that you can sell a product that you don't have to be there for the product to be sold. In other words, when I make, when I make an appearance on a TV show, I worked on that TV show for two weeks. Well, it's going to run online for the next 20, 30 years, making me money every time it appears on television or Netflix or Amazon. It's passive income, right? Book writers have passive income. They write a book, then they make money from the sales forever. It's passive income. And in a society that has no more factories like ours right now, <laughs> you now have the opportunity to sell knowledge. And that's where there's money. There's less work and it's all about selling what you know. We have an information driven economy now. You don't get rich by making physical products. You just don't. Why? Because America has shipped all that slave labor out to Asia and Africa. Crafty, but there it is. It's all the factories used to have in America, you know, the Ford Motor Companies and all that that created an entire middle class in our country that no longer exists. All that work has been moved out of America. I won't get into the details how, but what's important for you to know is that the way to make a living in our society right now is by selling information and to understand that you're already an expert at something. You are. What do people ask you about at work all of the time? That's something that's your intuitive wisdom based on experience and how you process experiences and come up with problems. Right? Take an overview of what people ask you for at work all the time. What kinds of problems are you solving? Okay, that's the first assignment I'm going to give you, right? And I'm gonna come back for the next three weekends and talk about some steps that you can take to start creating your online business. But the first one is you actually have to transform your idea of what's possible for you, right? You have to believe I'm capable of making change, even when it's scary. So I want you to start one, making a list of every time someone asks you a question at work, what is that question about? Okay? And I want you to do it every day. Okay? You could even move it to your personal life. What do people constantly ask you about? People constantly ask me about my hair. Who did it? Who did it? I was like, I did it myself. You're like, how did you learn? Practice and online. And then someone said, will you make a wig for me? I was like, well, uh, okay. How much? I was like, oh, it cost me this. I was like, $800. They gave me $800. What do you already know? What do you already know? What do you already know? And what are you pretending not to know? Write that down. Because first you have to establish what it is that you were put here to do. And whatever it is that you're automatically good at, whatever it is that's easy for you, I have a client that could clean your house from the bottom to the top, organize your files, do spreadsheets on Mint, do your taxes. She is a life organizer extraordinaire. She can put all the pieces together. I was like, why don't you have a website teaching people how to do this? Because I can't. I can't. I get overwhelmed trying to organize my house and my files and all the things that I have to do, get the taxes in on time, pay the bills on time, move it out here, move it out there. I get overwhelmed by that. Give me a computer and ask me to build a website, I can do that. So me and this client, we barter. We barter knowledge and skills. 
she is really good at going, nope, you shouldn't do that before that because that's going to take up too much time. What you need to do is focus on this, then hire somebody to do that because I can do that stuff at your desk faster. You can go teach a class while I'm doing that, right? So, but first of all, you actually have to know what you're good at. And what I mean by what you're good at is what is easy for you to do that's not easy for other people, right? Growing up, I got criticized because I didn't clean uh, like a good Afro-Caribbean Latina black woman. And I was like, y'all are paying for me to go to private school so I can learn how to get the family up. That's what I'm good at at school. I'm not good at that. So trying to make me clean the bathroom for nine hours on Saturday instead of sending me to the math or algebra teacher for more coaching because that I could learn and get a degree and do better than my family you know, behind me, right? So forcing a kid to do something that's not inherently what they're good at, you're not teaching them responsibility, especially if they are already good at something like gymnastics, if they're already good at calculus, if they're already good at organizing, you know, their lemonade stand and raising money every summer. What are they already good at? You should encourage them at what they're good at and then you should create opportunities for them to grow in that skill set because that's a skill set that they can make a living at. And we all just go, rah, 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 and it's not true. You know, fashion designers were little kids who sewed together or stapled together outfits. That's a lucrative living. There's something you already know. What do you do at your church? Do you organize every event? Okay, you need to take that same skill set and apply it to your life and create something. So the first step is to spend a lot of time paying attention to what you love, what you're proud of, and what comes easiest to you. These are the very things that I talk about in my TED Talk. Right? That's what the Dreaming Out Loud technique is all about. Once you figure out what you are inherently good at, know that that's part of the set of life lessons you were put here to get right, okay? The generation before me, it's part of your true node north, right? We're entrepreneurs. All the women ran some kind of business on the side, had 14, 15 jobs, right? Even as slaves, right? And my great-great-grandfather, who's Dahomey, would, could carve, a table that would make your eyes just glow. He could just do that. That was his gift. Okay, his, he was born a slave, but guess what? He could sell tables on the side to help get his family out. So that's the gift that was handed down to me. People could make things to make extra money. But the problem was we're all working 16 jobs, right? So that's no good. You're not building wealth that way. So I'm the next generation. The gift given to me is to learn how to be an entrepreneur and have a side job. The other gift that my family gave me is everybody worked 14 jobs to give me an education that would teach me how to figure out how to build a company where I, don't, I could work smarter and not harder, right? The education that I have is worth billions of dollars. And my aunties and my great grandmamas and my mama and my daddy scrubbed a lot of floors and made a lot of sacrifices and went without a lot for me to get that skill set because it's the piece that was missing in our shared ancestral memory. So what is the piece that's missing in your shared ancestral memory? That is the gift you have been given in this lifetime. You're already good at it. It's something that comes easily to you. Is it baking a cake? Why aren't you making videos about baking a cake and people asking you questions about where in the process they're messing up? That's all YouTube is full of. YouTube is full of people doing stuff that they already do easily and then selling it. Right? The old model of how to make passive income, which is what we're talking about here, how to start an online business to make passive income. The other model that's truly at work is, um, you know, we know how to bake a cake, she knows how to do hair, so you open a salon or you open a bakery. Okay, great, but then you gotta work 12 hours a day to make money, which is fine. But if you want passive income, which is what creates wealth, which means you can make money while you're sleeping, you have to learn how to use the internet and all of the tools that are available to you on the internet for free so that you can make money while you sleep. That creates wealth. 
that creates power because it frees up your time for you to do other things. Not only that you love, but other things that could probably make you more money, right? That's how you create wealth, right? It's not something that you're working on all the time. It's a way to make your money work for you. That's all passive income is, right? I figured out organizing people and teaching them ideas and concepts and making them into tiny steps that people could then do to make a living was what I was good at. What are you good at? What are you good at? What are you good at? Right? What are you good at? What are you already good at? Right? And just to little sort of wrap up is at the beginning we talked about your ancestral memory is full of all of the problems that your ancestors went through. Okay? And that they solved. They gave you all those tools. Right? But then they gave you a little something else. That little something else that they gave you that you actually know how to do, their sacrifices made it possible for you to do that. So if you know how to bake the hell out of a cake faster than your grandmama did because you had to light a fire, you actually need to think about, let me start a business about baking a cake, but using old recipes and adding new ideas. Okay, great, you can start a bakery, or you can get on your phone today and walk somebody through it step by step, and then let people ask you questions. That's business. If you go to Wellness Mama, it's a great website. This woman can clean. I tried to drop my client into. I was like, you got a skill set. Instead of going and cleaning for people and organizing them, do a website to teach them how to do it, and then they have to pay you for that knowledge. That way, you never leave your home. They can watch your videos while you are sleeping and buy products from you. Tutorials, right? You don't have to be rich and smart. And YouTube is free. So is Google. So the first step in making passive income is to figure out, one, what did your ancestors give you as gifts? And then what's a the little bit extra that they gave you that you're so good at, right? And the keys to finding that are one, what you love, what people are always asking you for at work, what people always turn to you for help. That's the thing you're good at. Okay, so let's start using that thing. That's the thing you're good at. So recognizing the things that you're good at is the first step, okay? The second step is to then figure out, okay, I'm really good at making the magical Southern pound cake in a microwave. Nobody else does this, I can do it, okay? Am I gonna worry about I need a fancy a video recorder and I have to hire somebody to film me making the cake and then that gets into lighting and then that's thousands of dollars. You could turn on your phone, go to FB Live and talk somebody through it. How did I learn to bake a cake? With my grandmother on the phone. Like when I was away from college. I was like, I'm doing what I saw you do but it's not coming out right. And she would ask me questions and she would ask me, you can do that on FB Live. You can do that on YouTube. You can create a video. You advertise to people just like I did today. I'm going to be teaching this thing. Can you help? All right. Um, by coming in and asking me questions about what's not clear. So I'm going to ask you, do you have questions? All right. I'm going to keep going then. All right. So you figured out what you're good at. You're going to go online. You're going to make this video. But before you make this live video, you can make some short videos introducing yourself like I did today putting them out into the universe, ask people to sign up for your mailing list. They can do that all kinds of ways. You can make a video on, on Facebook, remember all this is free, and then ask people in the comments to sign up. You can send an email out to everybody in your email list and say, I'm gonna make this video, can you spread the word? Here's the link where it'll be, let's start this. What you start doing is giving away what you know for free and asking people in return for that information to then join your mailing list. All right, because people who join your mailing list because you said something really important to them in that video are people who are going to want to buy more information from you to learn how to do that. So that's step one. I'd like you to practice that this week. Okay, here's the homework assignment. I want you to write down this list of these things that you love, that you're proud of, that you do already. Then I want you to keep a running inventory over the next seven days of what things people keep asking you to help them with. At church, at the gym, at, you know, work, right? 
What do people keep asking you? That's something you're an expert at. Okay. So after those seven days, you should have a list of at least 10 things that you're really, really good at and that people see you already as an expert. I want you to take one of those things and create a mini video and tell me what it is that you do well, what the problem is, and how you can solve my problem. That's it. It can be five minutes. You can do it right on your phone. Nobody's ever going to see it but you. But I want you to look at yourself as being an expert. Everything that you need is within. You already have all the tools to make, to monetize your wisdom instead of giving advice for free. People should be paying for it because that's what our entire economy is running on. So I'm going to leave you with that this week. You're going to make your top 10 list of things that you are an expert at. And then you're going to create a little five minute video solving a problem. Now, the problem will be if you're the expert at baking a cake in a microwave, what kinds of problems do people have with that? You know, oh, it ends up being too dry. Oh, it ends up being too thick. Solve a problem. Okay? Solve a problem. Okay? Maybe people, maybe people are accustomed to making their pound cake in a big old fashioned gas stove. What if they don't have that? What if they have one of those tiny little convection ovens? How do you make a cake there? Hmm? Walk them through it. What are the problems that come up? The cake ends up being too heavy. The cake ends up being too sweet. The cake ends up not being light enough, whatever. These are common problems with making that cake. Your five minute video is gonna solve one of those problems. I want you to do that assignment. And then in the bottom of the comments here, if you wanna post the video, you can do that. Or you can write to me and, and tell me what you discovered. So again, every Saturday now, I'm gonna be for the next three Saturdays. I am going to be, next two more Saturdays, I'm going to be here giving you tips on how to start your own online business. Today, we're just going to figure out what the business is. Next time, we're going to talk about how to set up a structure where people can come and see you and pay for it and how to build audience. So you got to find the people, target the people. All right. If you have questions, please ask them in the comments. If you want to be on the exclusive list, because what's going to happen in January after the new year, I don't want anybody saying I'm poor. In January, I will be offering a 12 step program, how to start your own business. There will be a live class version that you'll pay for. There will also be a recorded step-by-step -step online class that you can buy and do it each module yourself each week. All right. So there, and there's always private coaching, right? So I will be creating this class how to start your online business in January. But before then, I'm gonna give you so much of that information for free. By the time we have the class, you're already gonna have your business plan in place and ready to go. Promise. I'm gonna give you all the steps. But you gotta tune in, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, every Saturday. You can make time. The recording will be available for 24 hours after this class. After that, blah, blah. okay? So get it while the cooking is free. If you are interested in buying this class come January and you wanna get the early bird special, you have to watch these videos. The early, early bird special will be about 20% off. So, and there'll be installment payment plans or whatever. If you want to get in some practice beforehand, make sure you watch these videos and start putting all the steps in place. I promise you, by the end of January, you could have your online business up and running and people paying you. You gotta have a bunch of fancy computers either. When I started, I did it on the phone. I sure did. I did it right on the phone. I sent an email out to everybody on my list and I said, I'm doing a little hour long class on the phone. I got 1-800 free conference call and had the class. I didn't have any money. My website was free, it was one page, right? You could do it all in email. It ain't complicated. All right, so I'll see you here next Saturday. Let's do this. My entrepreneurs, my dreamers. And if you want the recording sent to you, you need to sign up at the link here in the video, thedreamunlock.com slash dreaming out loud, all one word, dash tools to dash sign up, all one word. Again, it's thedreamunlock.com slash dreaming out loud dash tools dash sign up.
or you can just go to dreamunlocked.com um, and sign up for Dreamers. All right, or ask, send me your email in the comments and I'll make sure you get the video. All right, thanks guys, this is fun. I'm so excited to teach this class. I've been wanting to teach it for years. I, will, I enjoy so much freedom having my own business um, to travel, to move to Morocco like I have, to live by continentally half in New York, half in Morocco. All of that is because I have an online business and it's not rocket science. This magic is available to us all and that's why I'm so excited to teach this class. Okay, already? Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>